garden tour end of June. We have a lot of things that have changed or grown and bloomed. The sweet williams are blooming here. Um, I saw some onions to get that I think I'm just going to grow as bunching onions and just use the greens kind of like chives. Um, lemon balm is going really well. This is kind of just like my crazy corner that I've tried to bring some order to. I have roses. Um, peonies gave me two blooms this year. Beautiful like fuchsia, magenta kind of colors. And so I have a rose, a dahlia, a rose, a dahlia. And then I have um, a wild flower there. What is that called? It is escaping me. Um, and then the yellow flowers and then the garlic and potatoes. And I just realized laying over there, um, I realized as I was looking through my garlic that a lot of it has brown leaves, like three to four leaves up. And so I started pulling them and unfortunately they were due to be harvested like, I don't know, like three weeks ago because the bulbs are already blowing apart, which is really sad. Um, this is a volunteer that I just left and it's really healthy and giving lots of blooms. Um, onions are doing well, transplanted beets and lettuce. This frise and um, red romaine and then radishes. And my sugar snap peas are finally um, doing well since I put some slug bait out and the slugs and the pill bugs stopped eating them. I see that there's a little bit of damage here, so I need to put some more bait out. They've been relentless this year. These were from starts as well, and those are doing really well. I mowed the lawn yesterday, and usually my husband just piles it in the mulch bin. Um, since I was mowing, I put it around my tomatillos. I have almost 20 tomatillo plants planted. That's what I choose to grow instead of tomatoes. So I have this empty spot here. I'll probably plug in some more onions here or lettuce. I've just got little bits of kale here and there, comfrey. The cabbage, broccoli, and romanesco are all doing really well. There's actually the start of a florette there, which looks kind of tiny, but um, I think it might have bolted and not doing so great. But anyways, there's the garlic. It smells very strong. Most of it has really nice size head on it but then there's ones like this that were like almost rotting um so i'm going to dry these out and i'm going to peel them and freeze dry them and make um garlic powder for this next year and we have more cabbage and romanesco and then saint john's wort is blooming which is amazing i'm so excited for this to bloom because i'm going to harvest it dry it um, and put a whole bunch of it into a tincture because St. John's wort is absolutely amazing for hormonal issues and um, for creating hormonal balance in the body and for seasonal depression. And then I have mugwort here that's going crazy. It's more like a tree essence. And um, Jess from Roots and Refuge, she a couple years ago said grow something beautiful, right? Don't always focus on just growing for production. So I have intermixed in all my veggies, I have flowers. So I've got a giant sunflower that's growing here, um, a dahlia that's here, and I can't remember what this one is, a verbena here. And butterflies are supposed to really like these, so. And then moving on here, we have a mix of calendula, borage, and sunflowers and this whole thing just reseeded itself except for the dahlia hiding back there and then I have a dahlia popping up down there as well transplanted a whole bunch of sunflowers to the edge of the fence there at the beginning of our property so I'm hoping those take off and do okay my chamomile is looking pretty sad I don't know what exactly happened to it if it's bug damage or what but it was all fluffy and beautiful and then it laid over and died so it did this a couple years ago too I'm not exactly sure what is going on there but I have this is like such it kind of looks like weeds but it's actually all herbs so echinacea 
Angelica, I believe. Mugwort. Oh no, Mugwort's here. St. John's Wort. And then um, more St. John's Wort. Planted two more tomatillos here. And then this is the cucumber side of the trellis. And then this is the bean side. So I'll have beans growing up this side. More tomatillos here. Out of the three artichokes I planted last year, this is the only survivor. But I did that on purpose because I only need one plant here. But I wanted to make sure that like one out of the three actually grew. So more tomatillos on that side. I've got beans planted here. I always let um, nasturtiums go up the trellis every few feet or so just because um or at least one on each side because it helps with kind of like a pest trap crop and i've got a little bit of um sweet peas so those will be florally and smell really good along with onions a swiss chard amongst my beans this bean is looking super healthy you can see that this one really bloomed out after i got rid of the pest damage because this one is only has like one little tiny hole and this one's like completely eaten so I've got a new crop of pole beans here new crop of bush beans because the bugs have just decimated it and I didn't really think this one through because I'm gonna have cucumbers and beans competing for the same trellis gosh I don't know how I did that hmm. Anywho, moving on, <laughs> I have a cherry tomato here in this pot. I had one last year grow here and it did fabulous. I'm hoping that this one is a um, indeterminate, which means it'll grow tall and I can trellis it up and over. I bought celery starts this year and they're doing really great. And I have more over there next to the cilantro. And cilantro is the only way I could get it to grow this year because of the pest. pests were so bad. My onions are doing fabulous. They are getting large grain stalks on them. Hey, hello. And strawberries, we've already gotten quite a few handfuls of strawberries out of the garden. Um, as you can see, the blueberries are loaded. So we'll have lots of blueberries. This has gone crazy with, um, I am, my brain is not working. I cannot for the life of me. Oh, honeysuckle. Um, between the honeysuckle, the potatoes, and the red clover, um, it's kind of really filled in there along with another sweet william. This is a tree that I started from seed. The seed was a... Um, I can't remember. I nicknamed it the candy oak because it tasted like candy. Anyways, it was an organic seed and I'm just excited to, it's about two and a half, three years old. I'm excited to see what kind of fruit it put, produces. If it's true to, oh, cameo. True to the cameo, which is grown here in Washington, or if it's different, so... Um, I had sunflowers that were growing here, transplanted those, more blueberries, more sunflowers. And this blueberry plant, for whatever reason, did not, it's looking a little on the struggle bus. And I think it had some transplant shock. So hopefully it will give us blueberries next year. Have a yarrow patch over there. And then potatoes all under, this used to be a pear tree. And I cut it back. And then this is my curly willow. What are you saying? What are you saying, meow meows? Oh, you're just so loving tonight. You want to catch those birds, huh? Yeah. This is a black uh, or a chocolate cherry. It was, I had that last year and it was really good. My rhubarb is doing good. More yarrow and it's actually in bloom. So pretty. It's like a pale pink purple color. This, I don't know if it's going to focus on it, but you see these ferny kind of trees. This is asparagus that is um, hopefully going to go to seed and, and drop more seeds. Oh, wow. Look at this guy. It's huge. 
huge. I have to come out here tomorrow and pick it. Oh, that one's rotting. Gross. There's quite a bit out here in the strawberry patch. So I have strawberries planted in three different places. Over there's a whole strawberry patch. Here's a strawberry patch. And then I have strawberries in towers in the kitchen garden. This herb is one of my favorites. It's called Feverfew. It is likened to aspirin in the way that it helps with blood flow, but it also really, um, the chemical component of it really helps with migraines. So if you can, if you struggle with migraines and you can grow this, get this plant growing in your garden, um, a gal, an herbalist that I found this information through, she said that a leaf a day keeps the migraine away. And so, um, I've harvested this and made it into a tincture that I sell on the website. So the tincture would be absolutely amazing to, as preventative, but it also really helps if you've just got a simple tension headache. It seems to really help with pain. And it'll also um, help a sluggish menses if you're like, body's not quite jump starting into your menses time of the month. Um, it will really help with that. And this is Greek oregano. That's just totally taken off this year. It's beautiful. More dahlias. I have a dahlia planted here and here. And then these are my raspberries. So not only are we excited about the fruit off of this, but these leaves are super powerful and really amazing for um, our bodies as women. And my goats love them. Hence the reason that they are in the garden now and not out there. And these fever fuse, these were just um, volunteers that I've just kind of let grow it's pretty and as you can see step back here so this area total struggle bus this area totally thriving i can only think the reason is is because for one there's this right above us which shelters rainfall but i think it has something to do with the ground underneath and the root system of this tree because i'll take you over here where i had a whole bunch of potatoes and this whole section had died back and was looking even more yellow and sad than that one is. And then there's this huge root that was super shallow running through it. And I just wonder if it doesn't just like kind of change the pH balance. So I'm not hundred percent sure on that yet, but, um, oh, there's some like, oh, there's raspberries over here. Oh, cool. First raspberries of the season. I have yarrow that planted itself here. And hopefully I'll have more dahlias here. Slugs keep eating them down, so I keep putting slug bait there. And our cherry tree's looking good. Forgot to mention the apple trees. They're loaded and doing good. Ah, little stinkers. But these will be ready here in the next week or two. And then these started with one little pot that I brought from our house in town and has now, it's like everywhere, <laughs> but it's such a pretty whimsical plant. And I love that I have a pink variety now, which I think that just happens with genetics. And this used to be like full of what are called like hot pokers or candelabra, um, not candelabra, candlestick flowers. And I don't know what happened to it this year, but it totally died back. Like it usually came to like right here and was just full. And I was not really liking them because it's such a holding place for slugs because they love these stiff leaves. And I don't know if it was because we had a mild, oh, I have some thistle growing there. Lovely. Um, I don't know if it's because we had such a mild winter that then it started to come up into like regrow. And then died back. I'm, or maybe it just ran out of its cycle. I don't know. I'm kind of happy about it though. Because I didn't really like them. And I wanted to plant other things there. And then we have the queen of the garden. Mullen. 
these flowers are used in earache oils. You infuse the flowers into the oil and add garlic and put it into the ear and it's really soothing and helps with earaches and ear infections. So this is a second ear plant and you can see that she is doing very well. I have more honeysuckle back there and there we are. We have gone around the whole garden. I have lots of comfrey and I'm not going to worry about showing that to you because I show that to you in every video but the mint is coming in lovely. Sage is blooming. Um, I've got a dahlia back there. This is carrots that I planted la late last summer and I just let them winter over and now they're going to give me all of these beautiful flowers which carrot flowers are just very similar to Queen Anne's lace. And then I have um, snapdragons coming up here. That's from last year. Dahlia. More sweet williams. I really like sweet williams. They are easy keepers. They're prolific in their ability to put out flowers all year or all summer long, like really strong. And they self-seed themselves really well, but they're not super obnoxious. Um, and I've got some poppies getting ready to bloom back there. I've got a poppy ready to bloom here. Oh yes, it's going to be one of those purple ruffly poppies. So I have purple ruffled poppies here in the garden. And then I have these really bright fuchsia, um, pink accented, purple accented poppies in the kitchen garden. And then this is mint, but I was out here earlier cutting things and was using it as a holding place. Um, this, I had to add more soil to it and you can see all the mint starting to pop up there. It smells so amazing. So yeah, that is the garden this year. I put this in um, the summer before COVID, I think. So 2018, I believe is when I put it in. You know, fully, fully went into the no-till method with the you guys excited about what I have? Hmm? Those two right there going at it are like chatting at me. Those are boys. So that's a Drake sound. And, shh. Well, that's a goose. But female ducks, in case you're wondering or want to know the difference, they are very much more chesty. And these drakes, oh, he's going to show up. Oh, big fluff. The drakes are way more nasally. So I tried to do a potato tower out here like I did last year. The ducks decided they liked potato leaves, and that did not go as well as planned. So here it is, practicing gardening every year, failing at some things, succeeding at others, Gardening is not a linear thing or something that you like arrive at ever. It is something that is constantly evolving um, because we are subject to weather, to, you know, if we amended the beds properly or not. I think my biggest success this year was that I had all the beds covered and then I was making my own compost. So after three years of make, trying to make my own compost, I was finally able to have enough compost to amend all the beds and didn't have to bring in compost from the other um, venues that I was bringing it in from. And I think that could just control how hot it was. My compost only had my animals waste in it and not anybody else's waste, which I think a lot of it's cow waste. And sometimes it can make for really hot mulch or um, compost. And I think I fried a lot of my plants last year because of that, because I've never had my cabbage do so well. Um, and I was also able to make my own potting soil from the dirt slash com or soil slash compost um, that I have made this year. So that is the garden tour for the end of June. I hope you enjoyed. I'm excited to share with you more and stay Make sure that you subscribe and follow me here on 
YouTube and over on Facebook and Instagram um, because I will be having baby goats in the next six weeks. So she's due in six weeks and she is due in a month and six weeks. So like two and a half months pregnant and almost one month pregnant or one month. I'm sorry. My words are hard today. Um, thinking about too many things. She's due the end of July. She's due the end of August. So we are coming up on their due dates and I always share their birth and I've been documenting a little bit more on Facebook about um, their growth and how they're doing. Oh, you're so cute. Would you like some parsley? Maybe? No? Simony, the baby, the younger one here. She is um, Luna's daughter. Luna is my chocolate dough and Simony is my buckskin. And Luna is the mama. Simony is the baby. So it's really cool to have first and second generation. And then we'll have third generation here once um, Simony has her babies. And I don't think I'm gonna keep any does. I probably shouldn't keep any does, but it would be really fun to see how Simony's babies grow out and genetics that way. So I will see you in the next video.